This here is a newer entry into the smaller lineups of access points that TP-Link is releasing. This is the EAP653. And like its older cousin, I guess, the EAP610 V2, uh, this is also a smaller unit that is Wi-Fi 6 capable, which is always very lovely to see. It has 160 megahertz channels, um, so you get those DFS channels, which is great. Not so great if you live near an airport or maybe weather radar or whatever it may be. Um, but, you know, it's still a great entry. So in the box, there's not too, too much to see. Uh, there is no power adapter occluded, so that's no PoE adapter. You will have to supply your own or have a PoE capable uh, switch. So this is 48 volt passive or PoE plus. Back to what's included is we essentially have a brochure of everything uh, within the TP-Link Amada lineup. So it's kind of cool pamphlet that they include, but we obviously don't need it. I don't know, some general public license notice, obviously something we also don't need. A quick installation manual, this can be useful in a pinch, especially if you plan on um, using this device in standalone mode. We have the access point itself as well. And we have bouncing options. So we have a, uh, I guess a kit for mount mounting this to the ceiling. Uh, we have some more screws. I guess these would be for like a junction box. And then here are some wall mounting options. Then see under here. Oh, sweet. So this is our mounting plate or mount. So you would screw this to the wall, your junction box or round junction box or single gain outlet. You even have an EU option here, which is pretty cool. And, you know, obviously you put your screws in, in accordance with wherever you're mounting this. So A, you know, is for ceiling wall or, or yes, for ceiling or wall mounting. And you just simply put the screws in there. And just follow the instructions. It's pretty simple. Now, what's really cool about this too, this is probably aluminum. So that's a nice upgrade over the typical plastic mounting hardware they've previously given with some of their other access points. Definitely liking they've moved on to aluminum as opposed to the plastic ones. I mean, this is just... This is just nice to have. It, it, it shows to me that they're really thinking about uh, their products as a whole. So let's go ahead and get this out of its bag. And we are going to take it apart as per usual. So let me clear my work area here and we'll open this thing up and see how many antennae are inside. A couple quick things to note about this unit. This is the hardware version 1.6. So uh, TP-Link does tend to release different versions over the course of a product's life. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, here we have 12 volt power, which is cool. Power over ethernet. This is a one gigabit port. So this is POA plus, like I mentioned earlier. And of course we have a reset button. Okay. All right, with those few things out of the way, let's go ahead and get this thing dismantled. Well, that first screwdriver was too wide. So we're gonna resort to the iFixit kit because this has all the great options and pretty much is perfect for working on electronics anyway. It's okay, hey. Uh, normally there's like a screw under here that you have to release in order to access the internal parts. But it looks like there still may be a screw hidden under here that keeps all this together. So I guess we got another sticker to destroy. Really hope they change that in the future. So we have two antenna on the, I guess, top of the device. Uh, depending on how you want to think about the orientation, I would consider this the bottom and this to be the top. So I don't see any screws immediately that stand out and something does appear to be holding this down. So let's just go ahead and flip it over. And uh, I don't know if we want to rest this actually on the antennae. So uh, let's put this back like so. And uh, let's get this sticker removed. So I'm really bad at destroying these and you guys have given me some pro tips in the past about this. But actually I don't feel a hole like here, back here, like I normally would. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I just, I don't know. So we're just, let's just try and pull it up and see what happens. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. So these um, pads, what are these called? Wow, thermal pads? Uh, or I guess providing the adhesion to the rest of the chassis. So I guess this is acting as a heat sink. And uh, this is full metal, there's a little, oh, that's also some thermal adhesion, um, thermal adhesion pad. Anyway, yeah, so this is clearly all aluminum, this entire shell is, so that's cool that they're using it as a heat sink. Uh, here is the 
rest of the unit itself. I don't see other antennae here, so maybe maybe these are two antenna technically each, one for the 2.4 gigahertz band and the 5 gigahertz band. Um, let's see if we can see any text. I don't see any sort of indicator on this side for what antenna is what. I also don't see any indication on the rear side either of what these are. All right, so this, we're just gonna do one click, one quick glance over this unit, just so we know exactly what we're looking at here. I like that little hand right there. It says, do not touch, must be hot, must be due, due to heat. Okay, here is the top side. Closer look at those antennae. Looks like some oil left over from some soldering, maybe. All right, that's it. Let's get this thing reassembled. And in the meantime, I just want to give a huge kudos to the engineers over at TP-Link for finally not making us damage the sticker to take apart their devices because that has been a real point of contention with me in the past. I'm putting this thing together incorrectly. Uh, anyway, it's been a big point of contention for me in the past and I'm glad that uh, they no longer require us to destroy those those stickers because there is valuable information on there and if you destroy the stickers, well, you're pretty much, well, I don't wanna say you're done, but it becomes very difficult to identify the devices later on. So, good job. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Hopefully that means it's because you guys are watching my videos. I, a person can wish, right? I, I can dream big and have wishful thoughts like that, right? That's cool, right? Now that we've sufficiently damaged the device by taking it apart, let's get it connected to a 2.5 gigabit TP-Link Omada switch, and we will do some bandwidth testing all around the house. As tradition, I have mounted the access point in the centralmost point of my house so we can do our tests. This year, we're gonna do things a little bit differently. Instead of doing a range test, starting from inside the house and moving our way out, we're actually gonna test at different points inside the house. The office, a couple bedrooms, a kitchen, and living room. And here's the general layout of my house. And then at each one of these points, we're actually gonna be doing a speed test with iPerf five times and then averaging those tests together to get our results. Now, I know that five tests isn't exactly accurate, but I think that's more than sufficient. So we're gonna start this test off on the on this laptop here that's Wi-Fi 6E capable. Yes, the Wi-Fi device that we are using is only Wi-Fi 6, but this should be more than capable of handling it. And of course, we are gonna be connecting to a server that has a 10 gigabit NIC that is plugged into the 10 gigabit port on my Omada switch. So starting testing now. Here are the results from my tests. With bandwidth testing out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the size of the EAP635 compared to some of its cousins, as well as the Ubiquiti U6LR. So this is the long range model. So as you can see, it's pretty much identical in size to the 610V2. And of course the older uh, 660HD or 
HD, they, they are the same as the exact size. It's significantly smaller. So we are, of course, getting TP-Link to listen to us and meet our demands for having smaller access points, which, you know, good on them. Thank you for providing that. Uh, and then, of course, compared to the very sleek UFO style, as some people would say, of the Ubiquiti's U6LR, um, you can tell that they it is significantly smaller and it is not as heavy as the U6LR either. This is definitely a little bit lighter and this is pretty beefy. Uh, but yeah, so pretty, pretty nice, I would say, in terms of size, much smaller. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the EAP653. I think it did a great job on the five gigahertz band. The two gigahertz band did leave a little bit to be desired, but for a real test in this house, I think it did a great job. And I think it's as pretty much real world accuracy that you would probably have if you were to have a similar build style to my house and uh, with as many walls in between objects and this EAP centrally mounted within the house. So I think it's a pretty accurate test and what you could expect at home. And yeah, like I said, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. So with all that being said, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. And I also want to take TP, thank TP Link for sending this over to allow me to test this out. Man, I really need to learn how to talk. Peace.